There is a light shining on the west side of San Antonio. Not a day goes by that uh, Holy Cross doesn't come into my mind uh, as a foundation. It was a, it's a, a, a great foundation for me, especially at the time when I needed it in my life as a young man becoming an adult. Um, it was a good, good foundation. Um, what uh, it symbolizes, whether it be a, a, a Catholic, a Christian, um, human, uh, it's just, uh, there's no substitute for that experience. I mean, I don't think, you know, I was at public school and, and it's just not the same. It's just so large and so big that you're a number and at Holy Cross you're, you're a name and you're a family and, and you're more, more than uh, just a student. You're, you're part of that living legacy of Holy Cross. Holy Cross is wherever we go. Eloy Gabriel Chavria, Master Sergeant E8, U.S. Army, retired, was born on September 18, 1964. His early education started in public school at Villarreal Elementary and Sol Ross Middle School. He then transferred to private school, attending St. Luke's for his 8th grade year. Following in his older brother Raymond's footsteps, Eloy decided to attend Holy Cross and graduated in 1982. At Holy Cross, Eloy was in the National Honor Society football and track teams. He later joined the cheer squad as a yell leader. Soon after graduating, Eloy enlisted in the U.S. Army and made it his career. As a decorated Master Sergeant EA, he served on active duty during Operation Iraqi Freedom II from 2004 to 2005. He earned the Bronze Star Medal for his service to our country and many more distinguished military honors. Eloy has two sons, one stepson, and his wife Elsa, who remain at his side. I'm very happy with, uh, with, you know, where I am in life, and um, uh, I hope that I could be an example to them, example to other people, uh, that you know, through hardships, uh, no matter what life throws at you, you know, has a positive attitude and and uh, uh, like what you do and find happiness in what you do and and you'll be successful and success isn't always measured by money or in, and, and, and material things, it's how you feel about yourself and, and what you can do for others. And I, and I say that it was probably the, the, the greatest thing that I've ever done in my life was to take a unit across the world, halfway across the world in a combat environment and bring them all back. Uh, do a job, do a job uh, uh, with dignity and honor and then you know, come back home. I, I thought that was the greatest thing I'd ever did in my life uh, until I turned my life over to God. And I, I claim that as being the, the greatest thing I've ever done. But, you know, as far as um, what I've done in my life, uh, physically and, and uh, um, you know, as a career, uh, the military was just so rewarding for me that um, uh, I was able to go over and, uh, and lead men and have them um, respect me, respect my decisions, um, and myself and my commander being God-fearing men, we kept our, our unit um, uh, on track. And, uh, uh, and one of the things that was rewarding was that my unit um, was responsible for me earning the Bronze Star. I'm very proud of that Bronze Star because it's a proof that, uh, that you did your job and did it well. Uh, and, and the Army's way of saying thank you uh, for a job well done. And I call it success because I'm happy with what I did, what I've done in my life, to, to say that you thoroughly enjoy it. Uh, I, I love doing everything that I've ever done. I've always given my whole heart and soul to it. And, um, and you know, genuinely liking what I do um, has, has, you know, uh, carried me and, and, and that's why I say I succeed. I've succeeded. The reason I uh, went to Holy Cross was my brother had already been there and he'd gone there three years and it was going to be his senior year when I was a freshman. So um, we got a break on our, on our um, tuition and then uh, when I took the entrance exam I got a scholarship that uh, lowered the, the cost so 
it was a no-brainer for my mom to say, you know, you're going to Holy Cross. Brother Fox used to be some this soft-spoken, uh, tall man, and and he influenced me. Um, and I'm sorry, I, I'm emotional. Um, but I remember him having a good influence on me uh, as far as reading and and wanting to excel. Uh, something about him. Um, we bonded, and um, I, I can't explain why I'm emotional, but uh, he, he made an impact on my life, uh, and I miss him dearly. Um, I don't know where he's at now. I don't even know if he's passed, but um, Brother Fox was a, a probably a, a real nice gentleman, and, and um, that was probably my first exposure to uh, the way that a man should be. Uh, soft-spoken, a gentleman, very confident, and um, and but he was also very influential. Uh, I think um, Brother Winslow, Brother Michael Winslow, was very, very. Um, uh, I think I confided him a lot more than any other brother there. But I would see him at the residence, and he would take time to mentor me and to be there for me as a, I guess as a father figure, but mainly as a. Uh, always giving me advice um, and one of the things that he told me uh, was that uh, God will never give you more than you can handle and um, it's just been profound throughout my whole life uh, those words that he said and, and you know we hear them a lot now people always use that phrase but back then as a young man when I heard that it, it, it touched and resonated with me and um, I've had a lot of struggles in my life um, but always knowing that God would never give me more than I could handle. And, uh, you know, our Lord must think I can handle a lot because He's given me a lot to handle. At the age of 47, Eloy was diagnosed with cancer. All of a sudden, uh, one day I couldn't swallow. I couldn't swallow my food. And this went on for about three weeks that I was, I changed my eating habits just because I couldn't swallow. I went through an endoscopy and uh, the uh, doctor didn't even stay to talk to me. When I wake up out of the procedure, my wife is in tears and uh, uh, I'm looking at her saying, well, did everything go okay? Everything all right? Uh, is, it done? Is, it, is it done? And she said, he couldn't do anything for you. And I said, well, what do you mean? He says, he couldn't even get the camera down inside your throat. He says, you have tumors. Um, and she's crying on like tumors uh, and he says well you got to go see an oncologist and so what does that mean an oncologist means cancer the doctor that I went to see uh, told me uh, you have uh, uh, you know stage four um, I'm gonna try to help you uh, there's no guarantees but you know um, basically you're 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 not gonna make it and I said well um, how long do I have? Uh, she shocked me when she told me, I'd never seen this doctor before in my life. First time I'd gone to see her, she says, you've got four to six months, if I'm lucky, if I can control it. And I was like, wow. So at that point, my life changed. Everything I'd ever done in my life didn't matter anymore. I was fighting for my life and I was you know, young. I said, well, I'll never grow old with my wife, I won't be able to see my grandkids, uh, you know, your whole life just stops. At the point that I turned my life over to God completely, um, that was in July of 2010, I said, Lord, I'm going to live for you for the rest of my life. You know, God gave me an opportunity, God gave me the, a question, you know, here he's asking me, Eloy, what are you going to do with the rest of your life? And my answer to him was, I want to live for you, Lord. Whatever life you give me, it'll be for you. And, um, and uh, ever since then, my life has been very peaceful, very joyful. So many doors have opened for me that I can't explain the miracle that he's worked in my life. It has been 14 months since my diagnosis. And remember, I wasn't supposed to live past four to six months. And... Um, 
I got an operation that wasn't supposed to happen. Um, so many things have, have, have happened since I completely turned my life over to God. I tell people I had nothing else. I mean, you can either be angry at the world or you can go on and you can find out a, a higher purpose. And, uh, you know, I just ask God to use me as an instrument uh, to touch other people and to bring his, uh, his uh, glory to them. And, uh, and he has, and, and although I struggle, uh, I, I suffer a lot uh, daily with, uh, with uh, pain, with ailments, with things that, are, that, that have gone wrong with my body, but um, uh, I, don't, uh, I don't despair. A lot of my classmates uh, look at me now and, and I've, I've touched their lives and, and they tell me all the time, uh, that that you know I've changed them, and you know one of the one of the wives of a friend of mine says um, classmate he's, she said you know Eloy I don't know why this happened to you but maybe God saw something in you that you were would be strong enough to to endure this as an example to us and I look back on uh, what Brother Winslow told me God will never give you more than you can handle and. Uh, Throughout my life, I've always had some struggles, but I've always persevered. And um, this is another one of those where God's not going to give me more than I can handle. And I just trust in Him and and uh, live for Him every day. And uh, He hasn't forsaken me, um, but He's used me. And, and if I could touch anybody out there and tell them that putting God first in your life will change your life, physically, emotionally, spiritually. Um, the foundation that I had as a Catholic, uh, being able to know the Lord, um, uh, going to school at Holy Cross, Catholic school, uh, being able to go to Mass every day, those things just uh, built upon my faith and, and have helped me in my life and the struggles that I've had. Um, and I'm here today and, and I can Tell you with a positive attitude that, you know, uh, it is what it is. And every day uh, I wake up, I thank God for the day. I actually am surprised when I wake up. I'm, I'm actually, oh my God, I live in another day. And uh, thank you, Lord, and use me today. And, and when I go to bed, I thank Him for the beautiful day that He's given me. I uh, purchased a motorcycle back in 2008. I wanted the biggest, fanciest motorcycle you could get. I never rode in my life. And uh, I bought the, the, the big touring bike with the, all the whistles and bells, you know, the, the CD player, the AM, FM, stereo, cruise control. Me and my wife uh, had a little intercom. We talked to each other on the bikes and, uh, as we ride. And it was just, uh, uh, I never rode in my life. And I took the course and uh, been riding ever since. But uh, all of our friends, we have probably 20 classmates that have bikes and we get together and we do rides. Uh, uh, weekend rides and we just have some camaraderie that on a motorcycle it's it's awesome you know for somebody that's on the west side that's economically challenged uh, there is a chance and there is hope uh, through uh, what the school provides uh, the scholarships now that are coming out um, give somebody else an opportunity to to shine to uh, show their skills to to bring out their skills uh, and just to be a positive impact on the community. I mean, just because uh, you're, you're economically not uh, with the mainstream doesn't mean that you can't contribute and give an opportunity. And I, I think my legacy that I want people to remember me by is that, you know, God was instrumental in my life and, and, um, and I became that faithful and humble servant of his. Uh, I think that's that's what what I'd like to leave behind is that people see Christ in me and say that, you know what, this man, you know, although he was a, um, you know, a man of the world before, once God became the center of his life, um, he became that faithful and humble servant. And that's what, that's what I'd like uh, people to say about me.
the light in the west side, Holy Cross of San Antonio, shining for the rest of the world.